New. It is time to get a new new, song. New, <laughs> new. Okay, Lady Ada, what is. What is this? This, this product. looks like a, a broken cable, right? So it's like, wait a minute, it's got the wrong thing on the end. So it's a micro USB on one end. What's, why has it got a, a, a USB socket on the other? This is an on the go cable. And these are used um, when you have a device that it can act as a USB host. So, for example, like the Due. The new Arduino Due, which we um, are getting small amounts of here and there. Yeah. And please sign up because we do get them in. We do notify people. Yeah, we got 100 in stock. We put them in stock. They went out of stock within one hour. And we, and we, we tell people, 100 we, Dues in what are we, QVC? Yeah. <laughs> this, is gonna, this is pure zirconium <laughs> Due. <laughs> Direct from Italy. <laughs> anyway. Oh, so only 15 remain. <laughs> Go on the payment plan. Uh, so if you look over there to the left, no, you right, the <laughs> there's, a, there's two little silver USB ports, they're like little USB micro ports. One of those is a client port, and that's what you use to upload code to the Due to like communicate. But then there's another port above that that's like near the reset switch, and that's the host port. So you can use the um, this cable, and then it will you can plug in like a keyboard or a mouse. I don't think that the Due has drivers for this stuff yet, but as it gets developed, um, I think there is like a USB host library for it, and I think there's some simple stuff that does work for it. You could connect anything that has USB, like in theory, you could connect um, a keyboard, a mouse, um, a, a USB key, a camera. I think there's some support for this, but I haven't played And some folks want to know is it a pass through cable? Or does it have circuitry in it? There's no circuitry inside, but you must have a USB on the go device to use it. also works with a lot of tablets that have like a little USB. They have USB host uh, on the go on the, uh, on the bottom, and you can plug in. We've got a Nexus 7. Yeah. And uh, we use one of these for that, and that'll great. Okay. Um, next up, this is a coming soon. We're about to have these next week. It's NetDuino Plus. Um, check out all the details Two. for this. Twice as fast. Yeah. It, Twice as NetDuino. Yeah. Um, Twice as plus. Twice as plus. Super plus, good. Double plus. Yeah, so check out the site with that. We'll have, um, uh, when they're in stock, we'll um, have them on the show. Um, next up, uh, we have a cool new USB microscope. And yeah. uh, Becky uh, took some photos and did a fantastic video. This will be the last video. This will be the last video you ever see from that um, space. Yeah. This is, an LED. this is the last video from Becky's previous place. So um, we're gonna let past Becky. Um, uh, Pre Hurricane Sandy, Becky, even. Take it away. Oh, Becky's <laughs> frozen in time. Uh, <clears throat> Becky's gonna be frozen for a second. Hold on. Okay. If you're working on very small electro- there she goes. If you're working on very small electronics, a USB microscope can be really handy. And at Adafruit, we love to test out all the tools out there and bring you our absolute favorite ones. We already carry one USB microscope and you can learn about it in this video right here. But today I'm going to show you this deluxe heavy duty model. It has a metal stand, a rotating adjustment for height. So let's check out some of the things we can look at with it. Inside the box, you'll find this sleek microscope with some viewing accessories, including this precision aluminum stand, which makes it really easy to make very fine adjustments. And there are eight mini LEDs whose brightness you can control to illuminate your subject just perfectly. There's a focus on the microscope, but you can also use the stand to raise and lower it to get a view of just what you're looking for. This is our conductive fiber up close. This webcam microscope has a 640 by 480 camera sensor inside and an optical magnifier that can adjust from 20 times to 300 times. This microscope comes with a few plastic accessories and uh, this one is for looking at your eyeball. So here's my eyeball. We particularly like the speed of the video on this microscope, which makes it really great for surface mount soldering and rework. And you can adjust the orientation of the frame just by turning the camera. This is a crucial tool for the iPhone mod we did where we added an illuminated panel to light up the Apple logo in the back of the iPhone. The parts are so small that the microscope makes it so you can actually see what you're doing. I'd love to see the things you find with your USB microscope, so show them to us in the Adafruit Flickr pool or on our weekly show and tell on Google+. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Okay, great. And then we've got a uh, great video, Becky. Uh, 
Thanks. Oh, I, wanted to, I do want to mention something about the microscope. There's a lot of people asking. Um, so we have two microscopes, and this one, the, the, the stand is much more precise. Also, it's much thinner and smaller, so you can fit it into place if you're looking into something, like a mm -hmm. case. Yeah, long and skinny. Long and skinny. Um, uh, but one of the things that is nice about this camera that I noticed is um, because it, it the the it's much faster because it's not as high resolution. I mean, it's still very it's a very high quality camera, but um, it's much much faster. So I found that you could solder or wild magnifying, whereas the other one is it's too jerky. Oh yeah, because so, it's so high resolution. Yeah, it's so high resolution. It's like every every time it sends a frame, it's this huge frame. With this, I found that um, out of the box, I could actually. You know, very easily solder and, and look at the screen at the same time. So mm -hmm. if you want to use it for precision soldering, the other one is a little bit sluggish. This one's much better for that purpose. So yeah. I don't think it's good. Okay. Uh, next up, we've got uh... a lovely OLED. It's actually an updated product. We already had this OLED, and um, it wasn't five volt compliant. It was a five volt rating device, um, and we included a chip with it. But then, kind of nobody ever, you know, people didn't like that. It, it was causing wiring issues, and so we decided to make a version of the breakout that um, had a 5 volt ready and you know has a regulator on it has the um, level shifting stuff on it uh, it's really easy to use and uh, you can have it yeah. here Very on the good. overhead oh can i uh can okay, i see again yeah this one's long okay and then get it too long. so um yeah these little oleds this is a 128 by 64 pixel oled and I'm using i squared c to talk to it, so it can use i squared c or SPI. Um, it's super, super fast. It's only a couple pins, because uh, it's serial. Um, it, it's 5-volt and 3-volt compliant. You can use it with any 3-volt or 5-volt microcontroller. People have ported my library to a bunch of different platforms, like PIC and Arduino and stuff. Um, it's really, really clear. Like, it's kind of hard to tell with this camera, because the camera keeps going in and out of focus. But you can actually really read all these pixels even though they're so teeny. It's much more legible than a TFT display. So if you're looking for something super skinny, super legible, and very low power, it's only about 10 milliamps for the whole thing, um, this is a really uh, great display. Good display. Uh, I like our new little 5 volt uh, ready, um, oh, ready. Yeah, yes. uh, icon that uh, Kevin Kevin designed. Now. Yeah, it's one of Kevin designs. Yeah, it's very cool. Okay. Uh, here is uh, our Raspberry Pi product of the week. Um, this is a really cool add-on. It's kind of an upgrade or enhancement to one of our current uh, popular products, the Pi Cobbler. Here's a couple photos of it in action. And uh, here's the kit. And yeah. then, uh, we'll just go to the other end. Why don't you talk about it? Yeah, I can describe this. So what we had beforehand, this is the before time. We had, um, this is the Pi Cobbler. And this is just a breakout because the Pi, if you recall, the Raspberry Pi it has this 26-pin uh, IDC connector, and so you can use this handy IDC cable, and you plug in the cable, but um, it doesn't plug into a breadboard nicely. So this is the, the, the cobbler, which we designed, which is a really simple breakout that um, has labeled pins, and then you can you plug the cable in, and you can plug into a breadboard or a proto or whatever, and uh, you're, you're cobbling together your pro project. Uh, and this is what I really like the original cobbler because it's very compact, and it's like really, you know, it, does, it kind of gets out of your way. Um, but some people said, well, I want something where it's more legible, um, like the text is bigger, and so we made the teeth cobbler, and the teeth cobbler is, uh, I don't know what you think it is, it's a cheese-shaped cobbler. Go us with our naming. I know it's very creative. Um, so this one, the text is, is much more clear, and it's much bigger because we have a lot more space. So, yes, yeah, so that's really zoomed in so you can see it says, CE1 and RxD and TXD, and so it takes a little more space, um, and you plug it over here, and then it's broken out onto the breadboard, and so you can uh, you can connect all your pins here, and uh, watch out because one of these pins change numbers between revisions, and uh, yes, yeah, so this this T cobbler works with uh, both versions of the Pi, both the Model A or future Model A, current Model B, Rev1, Rev2. Um, it's, it's pretty simple, just a breakout, but it, it's really, really handy, and uh, we'll be making more on Monday. I know we, we sold out, but hopefully Monday morning we'll, uh, we'll make tons more, because people really love this stuff, because they want to do Raspberry Pi projects on a, on a breadboard, and it's not easy to keep track of all those wires on the line. Yeah. It's a popular product. People really like it. I'm uh, pleased to see that we're uh, able to have something for all the Raspberry Pi version 1 folks and the Raspberry Pi version 2 folks. Yeah. There's a lot of them. Yep. Okay. And I'm sure it's all future compatible. That concludes new products. That was the new. That was over. <laughs>